Funkin, what were you doing? I saw that. I saw what you were up to. Leave that fern alone. Trust me, that plant's a jerk. You keep your distance, Punkin. Where you go? Oh, you gonna do a big jump? Prepare to be amazed. Here we go, Squirrel Kitty. Oh, oh, right into the hole. Didn't see that coming. Thought you were gonna go up. That. Anyways, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff, your tropical plant party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Really, Toby? You were all over me for water. You don't you want your water? Come get your water. Get a drink. Nothing big planned this week other than just finishing up what I didn't get done last week. I'm gonna move some plants around the house, bring some plants from out there, and put them over in there. You know, if you watched last week's vlog, it's basically just everything that I totally screwed up on getting done. Been trying to get like little projects done here and there, like things I've wanted to do for a long time. One of which being covering up this window just for like November through May. It's just, there's no privacy, none. And with that magnolia tree being gone that got cut down last spring, it's just, I don't like it. I feel very exposed. The summer there's plants and it's lush and it looks nice, but like this, no. And the sun that comes through there in the morning is blinding. There's like four hours. I don't even like to be in here because there's just no spot where there's not like laser beams of sun digging into my eyeballs. Anyways, kind of picking up from where I left off last week where I was trying to clear out this wall Get the plants moved over here, decide what goes in the house, what's going to stay out here, talk about how, oh, I can't believe there's not enough space. You get it if you saw that vlog. So I've already started moving a lot of the plants around and it, it turns out lots of space. I think I was just sort of overreacting and kind of in panic mode because there's usually plants all the way down here and then a, a, a little strip of the cement right there and then through here and over there. And there's so, look at all, there's so much room for activities right there. Plenty of space, so overreacted. Oops. Most of these don't go over here. These are all chlorophytums, spider plants. I mostly just have these to feed to the iguana in case like COVID gets bad enough that I can't get to the grocery store or there's like another mysterious produce shortage, then they can eat these as, um, as well as a lot of the other plants that are in here the pothos and the hibiscus they can eat all of those things and i say they the tortoise and the iguana but it's best for the tortoise to not because it's a grassland tortoise and this is all a little bit too nutrient dense i don't this wasn't supposed to turn into a lesson on reptile care so more room than i thought great news but that is also partially because i have been pulling plants out and deciding which ones i'm going to take in the house now, i already know the adenidias the Adenidia palms, the Christmas palms, those are going inside, they always do. And then I think I'm going to take a Sansevieria, a ponytail palm, and then the Hooper Rihanna. Those are all out there. Next thing to do is to get these pruned up, but since I need to take them out to the driveway, might as well do that out there, that would make more sense. Actually, I'm just gonna be completely honest, I'm kind of in go mode right now, not as much in vlog mode as I need to be, so I'm gonna get these cleaned up and uh, just take them inside. And then at some point during the vlog, I'll update about the plants that I decided to take in the house. Does that sound okay? We can talk a little bit more. I'm not going to be repotting anything I take in the house just because the house isn't warm like the grow space is, so it's not an appropriate time for repottings. But I have some like leftover clearance pots here. Still have the plastic on them. They have some holes poked in the bottom. Pardon the weird noises. That was the pot. So I'll just be setting those inside of those pots because I don't want to look at the black nursery containers in the house if I don't have to. And then any of the foliage is hanging down low enough for the cats to chew on, that's got to go. I'm going to get rid of all that. Clean all that yellowy stuff, the old growth off of the ponytail palm too. They're excellent house plants, the ponytail palms. I mean, in the wintertime, I do nothing with that plant. It gets a few drinks of water, from like November until what, May? I probably water it like once a month, if even, and it's a very light watering. Upriana is a different story. That'll just be like standard houseplant care, I think. If it's not doing well, I'll pull it out to the growth space and get underneath some artificial lights, but I think it'll be okay in the house. Okay, now, now I'll go ahead and get these moved out, cleaned up, and we'll catch back up with something, I don't know what, maybe this. Let's see, this, this week's vlog, it's gonna be a mess if you haven't picked up on that yet. Okay, palm trees are in. Pardon the background noise, there's people watching football. Give them a light prune. I could have taken some more off of some of these fronds. Like you can see up here, there's still a little bit of brown up there. That's okay, there's not going to be quite as much light in here. There's gonna be more than there was in the garage where they were tucked against the wall. But the point anyways was anything that has chlorophyll in it, I want to try and maintain that and keep that on there because they're going to need it. Any leaf that has green on it, 
is going to do some good for this plant. I didn't prune them very, very, very heavily, but I got off most of the really unattractive foliage. This frond might have to go just because it's in my way. Like, I don't like it hanging out over here. And pardon all the rugs. Old dog he needs his slip protection all over the house. It's everywhere now. I'm done with these yet either. I will end up actually... I have three other blue pots that match these. What I do with the other set of pots is I use them basically as drainage basins for these because these palm trees need so much water that there's no drainage dish big enough to hold the amount of water that flushes out of them if they're being watered properly. So what I do is I take the matching pots and I put these inside those pots with some bricks or floral foam to keep them raised up. And I put an airline tube in there that's hooked to an airstone that goes to an aquarium pump and that keeps the water that collects in the big basin underneath them, it keeps them moving so it doesn't get weird and stagnant. And when those burst at the surface, that encourages root growth to keep moving down. So it helps keep the soil moist for a little bit longer. I'm not necessarily going to say that it does much for the humidity. I mean, in a sense, it does for the root zone, but not, it doesn't really do anything for the foliage. Look at how bit, like, doesn't that just look dumb? So I will get to that at some point this week, hopefully, or next week. I think I'm also going to tip these over and put some wicking cord in the bottoms of their pots also. Only because I noticed last year that the water really wasn't evaporating as quickly as I needed it to, and then it would get kind of high, and then I'd have to figure out a way to drain it out, because the water should not be in contact with the bottom of the pot that's sitting in the basin. Did I go too far? I think I just, I went too far. Made this too confusing. What you looking at? What's down there? Nothing? That's what I thought. Always looking at the nothing that's down below. I was going to go outside now, and start talking about some things that I was going to do in the backyard, but well, it's five o'clock, so dark now. Well, it's not pitch black. It's much brighter through my camera than it is in real life. I moved one of my magnolia trees over here by this window. Yeah, I, you know, this is dumb. I'll pick up in the morning. It's getting dark. He's just laying there like he's longing for something, but I don't know what. Whatever could he be staring at? Toby, it's not time to eat yet. I know, it's dark, and this is confusing, but we've still got another, like, hour and ten minutes. Sorry, bud. Which is, why am I, why did I start dinner at five o'clock? That's not how I normally do things. <laughs> These day lengths really throw me off. I like how daylight savings happens every single year, within every single year, behave like it's new. I have this area set up here, just like random Christmas decorations, and I put fairy lights just sort of haphazardously threw them in there, but they're the kind which I like this, but they're the kind that turn on and off on their own every day. So I was trying to remind myself that I need to get back here and actually switch them on so that they come on at the right time every day. Five o'clock should be pretty good. There's another, yep, there's another strand. Where did I put the, oh, here it is. <laughs> I really was dumb and buried this other box in a really, really, really hard to get to a spot. This is, it's looking pretty cool through these gingerbread people though. The gingerbread train snow globe thing. Just hold still, just stay there. Goodness. I'm gonna like clean that up another time, but I'm just happy that I got the decorations put up. I think this Christmas tree's trash. That's toast. I've gone through, checked the bulbs, done everything. It just won't turn on. And then I had this other strand of colorful icicle lights. And I was like, let's see if those work. Threw those on and nothing. I don't think I'm going to throw the tree away, though. I'm just going to get on Amazon and order some, like, multicolor fairy lights and stick those there. It's a $39.99 tree from Walmart. Uh, they're all sold out. I went ahead and I ordered a new one for pickup. And then a few hours later, they canceled it. So I ordered from a different location. They canceled it. After, like, four days in six different Walmarts, $200. $40 worth of Christmas trees. None. They said they had them in stock, but clearly that was just, that was just a lie. For this year, I'll just put different lights on it. Doesn't that just look beautiful? <laughs> Jeez. Hey fish, how y'all doing? This tank, this is actually what I spent the bulk of my time on last week before I started vlogging, was trying to get the lights up here to work. I've been taking them apart and doing all sorts of things with them. I think that maybe it's just one of them that was broken. The lights that are on these tanks, on this tank specifically, they like communicate with each other. So if one of them goes bad, I think it was turning the other ones off. So I figured out that this particular light right here has a bad cooling fan. The other ones aren't hanging up right now. They're somewhere else where I've been working on them. But that light probably was overheating and telling the other ones to turn off. So I went ahead and like cleaned it up, kind of got the fan to work, and then I found out that there's no, there's no power. I have to, I need an electrician to come out because the outlet that those go to, 
something happened and it blew the electricity in this house is really bad if you haven't noticed that's something i talk about a lot on here it's just it's bad the house is wired in a very very odd way so there's an outlet that's right here one that's behind this cabinet and one that's actually outside which is where the tiki bar is out there all three of those have stopped working so going to get that fix and then hopefully get the lights back up on this tank because it would be nice to be able to enjoy it and I, the corals that are in here are very tough but this used to just be full of beautiful coral and well now it's just just the really tough stuff and then lots of aptasia anemones those are gonna be fun to get out of there if you don't know what an aptasia anemone is it's a well it's an anemone and then la la la. They're no good. They take over your tank. They're not fun to have and they're a pain to get rid of. I don't know how all this happened. It's supposed to be to implant things. You know, with all the Vlogmas stuff uh, that I'm going to attempt to do, I'll probably only get a couple videos out this week, but the weekend vlogs are probably going to be a little bit different just because, you know, people still want long videos, which I understand. But if I'm doing some of that content for the videos during the week, then it's you know you get what i'm saying i don't even know how to explain it whatever when i'm again i know the sun's so bright why is the sun so bright you gotta go okay she has an appointment she's got somewhere she's gotta go it's that blinding it's filtered out because of my lens it, trust me it is intense and obnoxious you don't want to say good morning i don't blame you i'm not feeling it this morning either okay okay bye that's not really true it's a beautiful morning it's just very cold not looking forward to going out there okay all right, made it outside alive. It is so cold, but it's supposed to warm up to like 37. That'll be better. I think it's about 26 right now. I have my mulch here. I went out with my brother-in-law just a few days ago and picked up mulch. Not enough to do everything I need to do, but enough to at least get a protective layer down on things. So that's something I should probably get done like today because the low tonight's 19 degrees. So I need to get the bottom foot or so of the bananas protected. I should probably do the same with the gingers that are back there. And then this clump of bananas here, that's going to probably look pretty different tomorrow. 19 degrees if it does get that cold. That's cold enough to go ahead and take out a decent chunk of these trunks on here. I need to get the base layer of that building. It is too, it's too cold to talk. I'm gonna pick up when I'm done with all this. All right, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Got the mulch down. You, know, you get moving, get the blood flowing, and just warm up a little bit. I did forget, though, that I was only supposed to be putting down like half the mulch, but that's okay. I can pull some back and then make my cuts tomorrow and add more on top of that next time I have a chance to go to the hardware store and get a few more bags. But bananas are all covered up and protected. Came through and cut down the banana cannas over here. And the banana cannas and gingers that were over here. This is probably going to need more mulch because this is a very exposed spot because it, it leans out over here into the driveway so a lot of cold air can get in there. I think it would probably be smart next time I'm out to get like probably I would say maybe three more bags and pile this up really really high maybe even do something on the other side of the fence with a frost cloth or something like that just to help provide a little bit of a wind barrier from cooling that area off is because it's, it's really windy here during the winter time that wind is very cold and very dry and it'll freeze this area very easily although i had a castor bean come back in here but I th it had just receded so that's I don't know what my point was there. Then I came in here into the ginger garden, got some mulch down around the sable palms. I made sure with the sable palms, I know some people like for me to talk a little about what, about what I do with the hardy palm trees. You can see that I left a little bit of a slope here. I want to make sure that the root zone stays warm, but I don't want too much of anything piled up in the center into the crowns on these just because that can lead to problems with rot and since this is going to be their first winter in the ground i'm going to be protecting them i'm probably pull them up nice and tight with some string something like this and then i have some little like pop-up greenhouses i'm going to put over them but i don't really need to do that until temperatures start to get to be around like 15 or below Probably not even really till things, probably around 10 degrees Fahrenheit, that's when I'll do that. More piles for the gingers that were over here, and those will also probably need another bag or two. And I haven't gotten to the needle palms yet. But the needle palms, they are so incredibly hardy, I don't really worry about them too much. I'll wrap them up and protect them, because again, this is their first winter. They're solidly hardy into zone six. If we have a really wet winter, that can be a problem, but that isn't the case very often. And then if that does happen, I can just toss some extra stuff over them, wrap them with some Christmas lights or something, they'll be fine. Tough plants. Also pulled out my inset banana, who's like, you can see, 
just having a great time, loving life. Now I need to take that in, and well, really, it's time to just start taking everything in. Uh, I've got a space cleared out in the gar- I don't think I even updated, did I? I've mostly gotten this area cleared out here to bring in some more of the cold hardy plants. I did decide to go ahead and just hold on to this handsome area and put it back there. Same thing with this Hooperiana. I wasn't really feeling like taking too many things in the house right now. After I got the Edinidias in, I was like, eh, I'm just gonna scoot these in here. They'll be okay right there for right now. It's cold enough outside that my camera keeps kind of freezing up and glitching a little bit. So I'm just gonna move them in and pick back up from there. Well, it took a little bit of pruning. I managed to make the queen palm fit. Fit, I don't know why I said that like it was a question. So I just went in and cut the tips off. I've had to do this in the past when I've had queen palms that got too big to get into the garage. The main thing, is to make sure that the spear that's the newest growth that's coming out of the middle that shouldn't be cut but they grow so quickly as we saw this year right i mean this thing effectively basically doubled in size so the little prunes not not a big deal and it, that's just less foliage that the plant's gonna have to support because i keep this in cold storage when i say cold storage what i mean is that Pretty much everything over here isn't necessarily going to stay right here, but all of these plants I store cool or cold. They're not on the heated side of the garage. They just kind of hang out, stay somewhat dormant for the winter time. They get a very little splash of water like once a month. They're the troopers, the sturdy plants, the ones that are very low maintenance and just hang out all winter. The bird of paradise, I debated purging this plant. I had two. I decided to let go of one of them. The thing with the orange bird of paradise is it's not a plant that I think is particularly super attractive when it doesn't have flowers on it. And they're nice looking plants, but they just don't have the same effect as the white bird of paradise. Maybe it's because I've been growing them for so long. I don't know, but just the thrill of them has worn out for me unless they're in flower. Now when I see these where they can grow outside or in really big specimen pots, I think they're stunning. But this is... Well, this isn't that. But the reason I was considering purging this plant was because I just don't really have the sun to get it to bloom anymore. The trees have gotten so big in the backyard that they just don't really get what they need to put out flowers. So that's why I decided I would go ahead and purge the one, keep the one that I've had for an extremely long time, just because it's, I don't know, sentimental? I don't know. And then maybe move this to a planter in my driveway next year. The thing is, I'll never really get to see it or enjoy it that much if it's in my driveway, but that's pretty much the only area that's going to get the sun to get it blooming. So there's that. You know, I, I try to not make a habit of growing plants that I don't have the light for, and this is, it's one of those plants now. It just doesn't get the sun, which is a shame. I've had it for a long time, so I decided that it could stay. And these things aren't staying like this. This is just like, I need to get them in, get them in here, get the garage door close as I have it wide open while I'm standing here. But you get the point. My hands are trembling. I need to warm up. It's too cold. He ordered a new cloche to put over the top of this Milano chrysum here. It's the cutting I took from a much larger one that didn't survive 2020, but I have my cutting, so that's okay. I prefer to root these under glass. It just goes so much faster. It outgrew the original one, so I found like a really nice big one to put this under to give it some more time to set its roots out. I usually like for them to put out at least like three to four leaves before I'm like confident that the plant's established and rooting, which is a little bit excessive. Just to be safe, I like to make sure that it's rooted out really, really well. Anyways, let me show you the box that this new glass cover came in. <laughs> Look at that. Maybe this might be too big. I'm hoping that that's mostly just like protective packaging because that's, that is absolutely gigantic. That box is about three feet, it probably is three feet tall. I know this is an abrupt change from everything that's been going on, but that's just kind of the nature of this vlog, isn't it? I'd have a peek in here. I think I might need to take this inside though to get it fully open. Okay, this is packaged very well. I probably didn't need to get one quite this big. Probably seems like overkill because let's face it, it definitely is. Especially for a melanochrysum. These, those are really tough, sturdy philodendrons, but I need this for a different project for something I'm going to be doing in a month or two, something like that. So it just made sense to get one of the bigger ones that I could find. It's, that looks kind of ridiculous though, but that's all right. It can look ridiculous as long as it keeps the plants happy. But again, pretty unnecessary for the melanochrysum. I mean, depending on your humidity. When it comes to just rooting any type of cutting, I like to have a lot of stability. That helps an awful lot in the process of getting them going. So a cloak will just 
help with that somewhat, but it didn't <laughs> didn't need to be quite this big. What you looking at down there, pumpkin? What you looking at? You hunting? Busy being cute with your little murder mittens? I think I have everything I need to go ahead and put curtains in this window. I just haven't done it yet because I still need to put the film up. I'm not leaving that rainbow film up there. That's, I mean, I like it and it's beautiful, but it really doesn't block the light out. And I mean, that just, it looks terrible because I didn't cut it to shape. And it wouldn't fit there anyway. So I'm going to check and see if the rest of the mail came. And if that film showed up, then I'll probably do that. Because why not? It's like 22 degrees outside, not doing anything outdoors. And the plants are all watered out in the grow space. So we can get some stuff done in the house. Hey, Tobes. Yep. Love you too. So much enthusiasm. Slight problem because everything's always more complicated than it actually needs to be. The listing that I pulled this from said two pack, but that very clearly says one side light panel or not so clearly because I don't think that was in focus. There's only two windows that need the shears on them, but my mom told me that with white shears or like eggshell, whatever, just a lighter color shear, that it's best to use two to double up on them. I really felt like that was just the epitome of mob knowledge. But when I explained what I was doing, I think she was thinking it was like that I wanted a lot of privacy. I don't really need a ton of privacy, just a little bit of division between here and seeing all everything going on at the neighbor's house and the view of like just the mulch piles and dead plants. And some light needs to get through. That's actually the only reason I'm not using the film on all the windows because most of these films say, I don't know if this one says on it, but most of them say that they're UV blocking and UV blocking wouldn't be great for the plants. Specifically when I got all the terrariums set back up over here. Well, that is glowing is that even going to be visible magical bell hanging out with the gingerbread houses and to do this i have to move everything which actually isn't that big of a deal it only takes a couple minutes to just pull everything off the counter and then i go up there with a step ladder to do this but i don't know if it's something i want to like keep doing so should i order another set of shears i don't really feel like waiting i kind of just want to do this and get it done especially because today the sun was so strong i just i had to i couldn't even be in the kitchen i just left trying to get some work done but it was so intense my eyeballs weren't happy with it now this is that static film and it is very cold so i'm wondering if i should let that maybe adjust to room temperature a little bit more let's just say remove outside film step one clean window. No! Telling me what to do. I'm a Taurus. I'm a free-range chicken. I'm gonna figure it out on my own as I go walking to the closet to get the window cleaner. Yeah, uh, no. Just no. I'm really not a fan of how that looks. Maybe it's because the garland's still messy because I haven't fixed things up yet and they're just I mean I know they're shears but like they, that's a little bit too sheer. Probably why I was advised to get two sets for each window which i thought i did but no so now i'm a little bit torn do i order two more when i don't even like how it looks or do i just say forget it i'm probably going to go ahead and order two more because these were really cheap they're like 6.95 like the cheapest cheapest shears i could find and uh, i will probably put some of these beautiful magical fairy lights behind them but like specifically these right here that are in that bell probably put those behind them just for the holidays because that would be beautiful and magical it does make the area feel more bright i don't know it's probably hard to tell on video this light up here like almost useless this whole area is usually very very dark so having that white there does make it feel a little bit more bright but still not uh yeah i mean you can see it they just feel it kind of weird but i'll get another set see about that and move on from there at the very least through the holidays because i'm gonna i think that that'll be pretty having the fairy lights behind those as long as i can make them look a little bit better because that's that's a hot mess all right it's the next day this is it's it's growing on me perhaps part of the reason i wasn't all that into it was just because just the whole change factor and like i mentioned i do think that having them uh, having two on each of these will increase the pleat and that might look better ultimately i'm not going to take them down because it's a thing of utility over appearance and it's only for part of the year so it's fine only mentioning this next thing so i know i'm going to be asked i did look into draperies and like something that's fitted to this window those are extremely expensive is it's a big uh, like fancy shaped window so getting drapes made that would fit this with that curve up there looking at a few hundred dollars and they have a uh, the there's like a blinds company that has a 
sort of a shade that would fit up here on this curved one that would push up and down into that semicircle, which would look awesome, but it's like $400. I'm fine with my $15 static window cling. That'll do just fine. Especially since, like I said, it's only for part of the year. When everything's all nice and pretty outside, I'll pop these off and pull that film off. And the sun's lower in the sky. Like, I'd say probably as of, I don't know, April? Maybe? Yeah, probably about April, maybe into May. The sun's much, much, much less harsh. I don't want to spend too much time talking about the windows and drapery. Thanks, already done enough of that. But Philodendron does seem to be appreciating the new clothes here. This thing had been holding on to a new leaf for like, I want to say a solid week to a week and a half. It was just poking out and being like, I don't want to open. Don't make me do it. And then literally within 24 hours of popping this thing over, it went, oh, moisture. Thank you. Even though I haven't particularly found this philodendron to be one that's like an absolute humidity hog and one that throws in fit if things get kind of dry. By dry, I mean like between 40 and 50 percent still with a cutting that's trying to get established it just it makes a world of difference having something over it see the real challenge comes from when it's time to remove them from the glass because this is a that's the plant that can't stay in there forever not very long these grow i don't want to say fast but for what they are I might say moderately quickly and can't keep it in that glass forever so th that always is a factor something I like to keep in mind when putting something in a bell like this that is gonna have to come out so my decision to use those sometimes is based on how long I'll even be able to keep them in something like this the way I usually transition these out is I just slowly step them into drier and drier conditions and to do that I'll usually start by just like putting something very small underneath the base of the bell just to open it up up and let some more air flow in and then after a few days of that I'll usually take the bell off for like I don't know an hour something like that depending on how dry the air is in the house and depending on the plant because you don't always want to shock them the point is just to slowly acclimate them to not having the constant humidity over them oh there's the update that nobody asked for that was all just a really weird awkward long-winded way of saying a making a disclaimer really from what I was saying about these glass bells still being 40 and awkward. What's my problem this morning? The point was that these are effective and I really like them, but if you don't plan on keeping the plant inside of them forever, then eventually there will come a time where you have to very slowly acclimate them to not having the stillness, the lack of airflow, and the lower levels of humidity because the plants will shock when you take them out of these if they've been in them for a really long time. Wanna go outside and check out the cold damage? I actually haven't looked yet. We had two nights in the lower 20s. Some areas they were saying, I think dropped into the teens. I don't think it did here though. I think maybe got down to like 21 or 22, something like that. Oh, hey Tuck. Hey, you doing old man? You wanna go outside? You okay? You seem sad today. Poor Tucker. Yeah, you're a good boy. I hate when these guys get old. You're such a good boy. Yes, you are. Can I have a paw? Can I have a paw? Okay, right. That's Toby's thing. My bad. Yep, found the spot. There it is. Good boy, Tuck. You're such a good boy. So many projects going on. I just said let's go outside, didn't I? There's just all the other things that I started to talk about in the beginning of the vlog and hadn't wrapped them up, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna do fish things another time. All I was gonna say was I DIY'd a very cheap lighting solution to at least get this side of the tank lit up. Oh, stop. Plants, let's go outside. Oh, I see a fiddlehead. That's good news. This jerk of a fern. Working my way out the door. We'll get there soon. This tree fern, I got it repotted. I want to say maybe a month or two ago into a coconut based mix. It's really airy. It's a nice chunky mix. And I added a fairly hefty amount of compost into it too. So that it will still, it'll, that way it'll drain well, but still have that moisture and that richness. Um, and then uh, unexpected cold happened a few weeks ago and took off the fronds. But these usually, like the trunks can be fairly hardy on these tree ferns, the foliage, not always the case, as you can tell. So it's a relief to see that it's bouncing back i was waiting for it to start to unfurl to make sure there was some life in there before i moved it out to the grow space so this is a really bright warm spot right here on the table so that's why if you're wondering why there's just a what seems to be a dead looking plant sitting on my kitchen table that's why okay now we can go outside yeah damage is 
about what I expected. These were already on the decline from some frost we had a little while ago. And the leaves on these bananas, those had already started to decline the trunks still, the pseudo stems, still actually surprisingly firm. You can see they have some mush on them, but not too much. I'm kind of I'm sort of surprised by that. Well, really, the only substantial damage I see out here is on the Cetchrysias, the purple heart plants. They look pretty bad. But the other things, like even the lemon coral sedum, which is hardy to zone 7, 6a, 6b right on the line. They don't usually come back for me, but I thought maybe over here they might. We will see. Same as the purple heart plants. Not hardy here either, but when we have a mild winter, if they're in a warm spot, usually they'll come back. So that's why I talked about all that in the spring when I planted this area up. May have been early summer. I don't remember. But that's where the majority of the damage seems to be. Everything else actually looks pretty good. Let's see, these Chinese fan palms might have a hint of cold damage on them. You can see they have this discoloration inside of the fans, but there's no mush and no browning. Some foliage on the inside that doesn't look great. It's also older foliage though, so that may have just been aging out and ready to die off anyways. The crowns on the inside look pretty good, actually. I'm wondering, should I just dig these up? What do you guys think? The Chinese fan palms can be root hardy down to zone six if they're mulched very heavily. I had one in my garden years ago that came back every single year and it did that for about i want to say six or seven years up until we had a bad winter and it got down to i want to say it was 13 degrees below zero fahrenheit and that 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 killed them off obviously apparently there was no amount of mulch that was going to save them from that that was a very unusual winter though that doesn't happen here very often is what i had decided when i planted this area up a few months ago and i did the impatience and the lemon coral sedum and then the purple heart plants in here. I put these Chinese fan palms in and I think the plan was to go ahead overwinter them, see if they come back and if they don't then to pop a couple of the sable miners in their place because I was able to get four of the big sable miners. They're, I talked about them earlier in the video and showed them. But I would have needed six. So that's why I went with the Chinese fan palms. I guess we'll just wait and see what happens with them. Well, otherwise things actually don't look too bad out here. Though I had already taken and most of the things would have been severely damaged by that cold, so makes sense. Eh, the cold has passed. Things are warming up. Everything's inside, ridiculous as it may look. At least it's done. I like this part. I've gotten to a point of normalcy where I'm like, all right, and just start pushing things over here, sliding things over there, get back into the watering routines, get the plastic hung up here sooner than later. I had a different plan for what I was going to do this year and the parts that I need, I don't wanna get too specific, but the things that I needed to pull it off, suddenly just like not available anywhere, at least not for a reasonable price. As we all know, things are a little bit wonky right now with imports and those sorts of things. And I guess the thing, the product I was looking for just isn't made in America. So I will probably end up just taking my plastic and putting it on like two by fours and just screwing it up to the ceiling because I'm, I'm over this. I'll search a little bit harder and see what I can find. But it's not dreadfully cold outside right now either. It was for a couple of days, but I would imagine for the most part, usually December here where I live is like in the 40s and 50s typically. When it's in the 40s and 50s outside, usually it's pretty easy to maintain temperatures in here right around anywhere from 70 to 85, somewhere in there. Did y'all have fun? Small business Saturday and Cyber Monday. I didn't get much. I got a new spray bottle. It was a good price. It was a two pack. I really like these type right here that put out that ultrafine mist. Yeah, look at that. That's that's a nice spray. I got a new pH pen. I don't really know why. It was six dollars. That was kind of an impulse buy. I didn't really need this because I have another pH pen, but I haven't used it in a long time. And the, the last time I tested it up against the liquid test kit, it was a little bit off and I calibrated it and it still wasn't quite right. So I thought, well, I'll just get a new one, $6. I don't know how it's going to work, but those aren't really an instrument that needs to be very expensive, at least not from my experience. Oh, if you were wondering, so the pH, I use that to monitor how the water levels change when I add in fertilizer. So if I add in fertilizer into my big barrel when I'm getting ready to take care of the plants, I check the pH to make sure that that fertilizer hasn't crashed the pH to a level where it's going to be harmful to the plants. That's not typically a problem, but it's something that just throughout the year, I like to make sure probably about once a month that I have a look and see what's going on with the water, especially the tap water, because it tends to fluctuate the various levels of 
like just nastiness of things in the water changes throughout the year. St. Louis has pretty good tap water. So it's not something I usually have to worry about, but when it does get bad, I have a water filter that I can use for the plants. I typically use it for the fish, but if it gets that bad, I can use it for the plant. I just prefer to not, because it's a pain in the butt. That's the reasoning behind the pH pen. Not saying it's necessarily something everybody needs to do, just something like to do to be cautious, particularly with plants that are really delicate, like the orchids, which I don't have a ton of anymore. I'd like to get that collection up and going again at some point. And then the ferns and some of the aeroids, calatheas, I don't really mess with them very much anymore, but when I do, I like to watch the dissolved solids in the water and make sure that things aren't fluctuating too high or too low with the calcium levels. The stromanthi troopers, I had these things floating around with <laughs> goldfish outside all summer. I didn't care about the dirty water. I would think that high levels of probably fluoride, chlorine, chloramines, could be a problem, but as far as the TDS of the water, meaning the total dissolved solids, organic and organic waste, and just things that are floating around in there, they seem to be pretty unaffected by it. Or why are we talking about, oh, cause the pH pen. Anyways, yeah, got a pH pen, two pack of water bottles, spray bottles. Oh, and I also got, I mentioned, maybe it was last week when I was trying to get the plants arranged in here, that I was going to have to probably put some more lights in somewhere around over here and those sand side bulbs that were from a vlog a couple i don't know maybe two vlogs ago where i was setting everything up in here the you can't see the light bulbs it doesn't matter those went on sale ten dollars off so i have a box of those coming in the mail which i'm like stupidly excited about light bulbs i don't know why the aquarium lights and the grow lights i think it's just because there are things that have been like on my list of things to get done for such a long time that it's fun to be checking them off and to be doing it when they're everything's on sale and getting them for cheap that i very much enjoy what's not to love about that so hopefully those box of bulbs will be coming and then i'll probably have to make some trips to the hardware store hopefully not too much because i'm still trying not to go out especially right now because covid's gotten so much worse but i'm going to need some sort of fixtures up there to get those lights more so like in this area so they shine down right here because I'm going to have some more of the sun loving plants right up here in the front and then the reason for all this that I had mentioned was because this cord why is this cord in my way I need to move that this monstera has grown so much that it's shading things quite a bit so I'm going to have to step up some things with lighting which is fine that's fine just need to be able to blast some more rays directly in there and then my cactus and succulents I want to make sure they're getting more light too so I might be moving some shop lights around and doing some things with that just by having more bulbs it frees up a little bit more of uh, what's the word here it gives me the ability to play around with things a little bit more that's that's what i was trying to say don't know why it was so hard to say but it was thinking i have a shop light that's hanging up over here you might be able to see it see that shop light up there it doesn't really do much i mean the croton that's over there might kind of appreciate it on the camera it looks like it's a lot closer to it than it actually is it's not that close i don't know how many benefits it's getting from that light so this thing about relocating that light to being above one of these shelves and adjusting these shelves probably gonna go ahead and just get rid of the bird cage i really don't need it i need to let go of that and setting something up for the cactus and succulents on a top shelf that would be a good place for them because they don't really need to be watered much but they're not going to get much light of any kind really unless i put something up there because i need to raise this table up somehow i don't know how because the bikes are in the way it needs to come up a little bit more because the plants still don't quite fit under there so basically everything that's on this shelf over here with all the arid loving plants see the agaves and cactus and for some reason i have a lalia sitting over there an orchid that shouldn't be i can move those up on top of everything and put a little white that hangs from the ceiling and then have more shelf space because i'd like to do some propagation things and i need just a little bit more storage space for smaller plants i think that might be a good solution i don't know we'll see that is probably something i'll be exploring next week and probably play around with the fish tanks a little bit more we'll see i know the aquarium stuff might seem kind of random but i've noticed that there's a pretty significant crossover for plant people and fish people a lot of us are into both and there have been a lot of things that have happened in the fish community that are very similar to things that have been happening in the plant community over this last year like a lot of what we're seeing with the changes in the markets and pricing and what's available and what's not 
happened in the fish community several years ago and things changed quite a bit like used to be able to buy coral i was talking to someone on instagram about this like the way things started to be uh, sold especially with coral it used to be that you know you could go to the store the wholesalers would send out like rocks that had a whole bunch of coral on them usually aquacultured but not always i only ever had purchased aquacultured mean like started in captivity and reproduced or divided up in captivity i should say but you used to buy them like on a rock I mean, you could get like decent sized pieces for relatively good prices you could order them as assortments so the stores could get an assorted mushroom corals and you never knew what you were going to get that's just an example but then uh, people started giving fun names to some of the really fun fancy corals that they would randomly find with these assortments and uh, the prices on things start to skyrocket and it turned into being able to buy a rock covered in uh, let's say zoas they're coral that look like tiny little buttons and they come in all different colors you used to be able to buy a, a rock of those and then it switched over to being you could just get like one or two little coral polyps for astronomical prices and that's kind of like what's been happening in the plant community where people are selling sticks and divisions and cuttings and now a lot of the pet stores the saltwater stores that are selling coral they're kind of doing the same thing that they're doing the same thing it would be kind of like if costa farms major grower here in the u.s were to start selling plants as cuttings or you know maybe they just have a few roots on them and set them out to the stores you could go in and be like hey well maybe it's hard to get these big established plants but we got cuttings for you we're going to charge you like 70 to 300 dollars a piece for them but this is how we're going to do things now i hope things never go that way with plants but that's what happened with coral so it's been a similar shift a similar thing has happened over there how did i start talking about well, eh, anyways what else did i get oh and some aquarium lights which i was hoping would be here for this video I don't think they will be. They're cheap. They're for my freshwater tank. It's a whole big thing. When they come in, I'll probably talk about it, maybe, unless I get really excited and want to put them on the tank right away and not film it. But I talked about how the lights on the saltwater tank aren't working, but I have just, like, rigged up some other lights on top of there. One of those lights, the one that's in the middle of the tank, it has kind of a yellowish hue to it. That was originally on my freshwater tank as a replacement to the LED strip that broke on that tank. I had that, the original light, for like 10 years. It was great, but they, they only last so long. Then I replaced it was just really cheap. They call them black box LEDs from Amazon. And uh, yeah, as to be expected, most of the nice bulbs burnt out on that one within like six months. That's why the water's yellow, because none of the blue lights work on it. But I had two of those. The other ones don't top my freshwater tank. So I can swap that one out with the one on my freshwater tank and get the nice blue and white light going over the saltwater aquarium again, and then have more appropriate lights over the freshwater tank and be able to close it. We'll talk about it. It's not anything terribly exciting. Just what's going on, doing the things with the plants and the fish. Oh, got some nice blooms popping open here over on the holiday cactus. That's exciting exciting and does not want to focus all right i think that's going to do it for this week was that enough chaos for everyone it's been one of those weeks probably going to be this way for a few weeks where i just i have a lot of little projects going on and nothing really big or um time consuming really that would make the videos go on for a long time so that's just when i vlog a little bit every day just get little pieces of all the little projects Sorry, it's just the way life is right now. Anyways, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything just going beautifully for you. Comment down below, what's going on with your plants? You got fish, what do you do with your fish? You have any LEDs you would recommend for your aquariums? There are so many off-brand LEDs that can become like a really big headache trying to decide which really cheap LED is worth the money. Because if they're only gonna last six months to a year and a half, that's when I'm like, okay, well then I'll just, maybe just save a little bit longer and get one of the name brand ones that's hopefully going to last a long time so the ones i had that broke they're like 10 years old something like that so they've lasted a long time and i think they're fixable i just need to change some outlets around to get the electricity going underneath that fish tank again the gfcis burn out they get old that happens i mean the same ones that the house came with so they're probably the same ones the house was built with like i said comment down below love talking to everybody usually this is the point in the video where i talk about what's going on next week i, I have no idea what's going on next week i have some ideas but it's it's like to just kind of go with the flow of things shut up now hope y'all are having a great weekend and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye